Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have episode four of my Plant Basics series and in this episode we are going to get into how plants use water, how water moves through the structures in a plant. In my Plant Basics series we covered the basics of plants. We covered the structures, features, functions and essentially how plants actually work. And we do this so that we can learn together with the hope that we can grow our plants a little bit better. Before we get into it, I would like to ask that if you feel like you want to, please do interact with this video in whatever way that you can. A like, comment, subscribe, or even watching an ad all the way through helps to support me continue to make these videos. In episode two, the cellular structure of a plant leaf, we covered some structures that facilitate the movement of water through a plant cell. Today, we're gonna to take a bit of a deeper look as to how water actually moves through plants. And we're going to begin that journey at the roots. As we know, roots on different plants can look very different. In general, they sit below the soil and their function is to uptake water and nutrients from the substrate that they are growing in. Root structures of plants can be quite different, but generally they are either fibrous or they have a tap root. In many dicotyledon plants, which we covered in episode two, they tend to have a tap root system. A tap root is typically one primary root system that digs deep into the substrate, which provides a plant with really good structure and support. And then we would typically have some secondary or lateral roots emerging from that one tap root. Fibrous roots then are a lot of very fine roots which form a kind of a mat in the substrate. So you're thinking of your plants like your begonias, a pilea, a lot of fine root species. Next time you're repotting a plant or you're looking at the roots, try to notice which one that they might have. And I could tell you a lot about how this plant deals with water. Although with fibrous root systems, they are limited, they can provide good structure and stability to soils and prevent soil erosion. As a bit of a side note, we also know about adventitious roots or aerial roots as a lot of us know them by from a lot of our climbing tropical house plants. Aerial roots can also take in water and nutrients. But more importantly, they can provide the plant with a lot of structure and support and enable them to climb higher in a canopy situation to get higher light levels and also increase then the size of their leaves. Even though adventitious roots can uptake water and nutrients, the majority of this really happens below the soil at the root tip or the root hairs of the plant. If you've ever looked closely at some roots when you're repotting, you might notice the root hairs. These are kind of fluffy, fine little hairs, and they are like this to essentially provide a really high surface area for intaking water and nutrients. The primary method by which they do this is something called osmosis. Osmosis is the passive movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane, and permeable just means that something can go through it, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So if you can visualize that, let's say we have an area of high concentration of water, an area of low concentration of water, and a semi-permeable membrane in the middle. So osmosis is a passive movement of these water molecules through the semi-permeable membrane over to the area of low concentration. So we know now how this movement actually happens. But when we get down into the plant cells, this is how we can tell how water affects the cells of the plant. Plant cell walls are made out of something called cellulose, and this gives the cell structure, but this is greatly affected by the water content. In general, we would say that there are three states of this plant cell. And this is hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic. So hypotonic or turgid cells would be at their kind of maximum intake of water. And all of this water will be pushing a lot of pressure on the cell walls and the cellulose, and it can't take in anymore. It's at maximum capacity. This means that the plant cells are firm and swollen and they're nice and plump. 
okay? Nice and plump. Isotonic then is a more kind of a neutral phase where there is no net loss or gain of water. We have water moving in, but we also have the same amount of water moving out. And this is, like I said, a neutral state of the plant cell. Then we have something called hypertonic or a plasmalized cell. And this is basically the opposite of hypotonic. So the cell has essentially shrunk itself. It's collapsing in on itself. It has no water inside and it's totally dry. So as these are kind of the three states of how a plant cell is affected by water intake, we can try to apply this now to our houseplant care. So a kind of a top tip and how we might be able to apply this information to our plant care. If you think about it, let's say you have a plant in a pot and the substrate is gotten, it's really, really dry. If osmosis is moving water passively through an area of high concentration to low concentration, if the substrate is drier and has a lower concentration than the plant cell itself, then the plant is actually going to further lose water when the soil is dry. So this will result in those hypertonic plasmalized plant cells and they will become very shrunken in on themselves. This will lead to desiccated root systems and it's why when substrates can be dry for long periods of time, if the plant is not suited to that environment, the plant cells can actually lose water more rapidly through osmosis. You may notice when you're assessing whether or not your house plant needs water, over time when you get to know certain plants and you care for them for a while, you may realize that the leaves can become kind of floppy, meaning that they have no water in them and they need more, or they can be really turgid and feel hard and full of water, very plump. So this is actually telling you what's going on deep down under a microscope, what's happening actually in the plant cells themselves. So if the plant cells are plump and full of water, the leaves are gonna feel really hard and turgid. And on the opposite side of that, if the plant cells are really dry and they need water, they're plasmalized, then the plant leaf is going to feel a little bit more floppy. This is not to be said for all species, but it can help you when you're noticing certain things about what's going on in your plants. So we know now how plants actually take up water from the substrate when we give them water. And on top of that, I would like to refer back to episode three on photosynthesis and how plants use light. So remember that water is an essential part of the photosynthesis equation, and we need that to complete the photosynthesis process in order for the plant to make food and to continue growing. And photosynthesis cannot be completed without it. So this I'm hoping is building on some kind of building blocks with how plants are actually working. And I'm trying to incorporate that in each episode where we build on what we've learned and we add more as we go. So if you haven't watched the previous episodes, I would encourage you to go and watch them in order because we do refer back and it helps you to understand, I think, what's actually going on. So that is it for this video. I hope that this was useful for you and practical and I hope that you are enjoying learning all of this stuff together and kind of building on that knowledge and it, I do find it is making me see my houseplants differently and understand really the common mechanisms that are present throughout all of our species. While they're quite varied when you get down to the basics, a lot of those elements can be the same and can help with, in general, your plant care. If you did enjoy this video, please interact with it in any way that you would like to, whether that is a like, comment, subscribe for future content, or just support me in general by watching an ad all the way through. I'm really enjoying this series. I hope that you are too. And I think the next episode is going to be on extra floral nectaries. What are they, why do they occur, and how is that related to all the things that we've just learned in these last four episodes? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next week. Bye.